right where we give serious writing critique without taking ourselves too seriously. My name is Randy Lindsay, and with me here today is... Janet Rallison, Portia Baker. Brock Boer, and this episode is brought to you by Writers Clearinghouse. Visit writersch.com for more information about writing and see if you can connect to an agent or an editor who wants to see more of your work. Here we go. All right, this month we are doing last page of the first chapter. Uh, so the criteria is kind of a little bit different, but we're really looking for to see if the chapter wraps up with the information that it, it needs for the first chapter wrap up and compel us forward to read the next chapter. Uh, today we're gonna have Brock uh, read, and if any of us think that uh, an editor would stop reading, we're gonna hit our buzzer. Okay. Maybe even his buzzer might be too. <laughs> I'm gonna have to grab the buzzer out of the scene. <laughs> All right, last page of Maddie's Nails. Maddie's perfectly polished nails are painted in Pflugerville colors, royal blue and maize. I look down at my greasy hands. Should have done something with my nails. I'm a day late and a manicure short in the realization because there's no hand hiding in cheerleading. We run through several cheers before moving to elevator stunts. I take my position as flyer, putting my right foot into Maddie's cupped manicured hands on the first count. My left foot in the other base on the second and keeping my legs shift keeping my legs shift and they lift me on the third. As I rise high into the air, I keep my body stiff with my hands in a V formation. I give my best smile, looking straight forward because a stunt doesn't count unless you smile. I feel someone watching. I turn slightly to the right and I freeze. It's Alex standing beneath the tree near the fence watching me. The world slows as my eyes meet his. Alex, my perfect boyfriend. He stands poised toward our practice, watching. A thrill waves through me. He's not supposed to be here. I blink, trying to breathe, my smile faltering. Three, two, one, Maddie says, but her voice is muffled like she ate too much peanut butter. I'm supposed to relax and fall into the arms of the base. Okay, I was a cheerleader and I was a flyer. Me too. And, oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> you must have been a flyer. <laughs> now everybody has this picture in their head. You're welcome. So, um, <laughs> uh, so the last thing you do is relax when you're up in a pyramid or any kind of stunt. Okay, you your body is as tight and taut as possible, and when you go into their arms, you especially need to make sure that you are stiff and you go into V formation when they catch you. If you are loosey goosey, they're not gonna be able to catch you and you will fall and you will get hurt. So that is my so little bit of you, information. You Do your thought research. This was about writing. Now you know how to be a flyer. <laughs> well, but it is about writing in the sense of any time that you're writing about yes. anything, you need to make sure that you do your research really well so that you know these things. Um, because people like me <laughs> are gonna catch this and say, mm -mm, no, 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 you don't do that or you're gonna get hurt. Um, so anyway. I agree. So yeah. by Lucy Goosey, you, you weren't meeting my meaning my media manager, were you? Come here, come here, Lucy. Oh. <laughs> we have Lucy Goosey with us today. Because with us today is the real Lucy Goosey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just the Goosey part. She's still Lucy. Uh, okay, I'll keep reading. Okay. I'm supposed to relax and fall in the arms of the base behind me, but I'm completely off balance. Alex is here, I think, as I collapse. I hear a sickening crunch as my head explodes in pain and my vision turns momentarily dark. Should have followed Torsh's counsel. Maddie shrieks and drops my foot. I know what I've done before I see the blood pouring from her nose. I should help her, but I can't. I jump up, running toward Alex. This is impossible. Because Alex, my perfect boyfriend and soulmate, died nine months ago. Nice. Ooh, that's, that's a great ending. Shivers. That was a great ending. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's ten, mm. 10 out of 10 for that ending. Or what did they do in cheerleading? I actually was a cheerleader, but I was a bad one, and I didn't finish doing this. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't on top of the pyramid. <laughs> I was as far up as we went. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Strange facts about our past. I was, yes. Just for the record, I was never a cheerleader. I'm saying. I'm definitely not. But I am a flyer. Yeah. Cheerleading yeah. and taekwondo. Yeah, different kind of flyer. Different kind of flyer. Yes. Um, yeah, this was, there, this was strong. Um, the voice was great. Yeah. There's, like I said, a couple of little things, like you mentioned, maybe said, I'm supposed to remain calm and follow the arms of the base behind me. 
or mm -hmm. maybe I'm supposed to assume my assume my position. Change the word there. So, but maybe well, she's supposed to to keep her her muscles taut, and right. you know, on the third one, pike. It's called pike. So you they, they go down and you don't bend your knee at all, but they go down and then throw you up and as you go up, you pike into that V position and you know go into their arms. So instead, you could say that instead of piking, she kind of pack, panicked and her arms flailed. And then they cannot catch you if your arms are flailing or your legs are flailing. And that can cause absolute injury. It has happened with me. So with another, when I was in Pyramid and I was on the second level and the girl on top, she did that and caused um, some trouble. So. Where my shoulder got popped out of socket. Good times. Aye. So anyhow, um, that's a really quick way you fix. You can fix this, but this submission is really strong. It's really yeah. great. I love, love the voice. Um, the only other thing I would say is watch for those as is in the middle of the sentences. I was quite surprised Jeanette did not buzz, that's which true. means your voice and this piece was so strong. Where was there an as in the middle? There were several. Oh, as is as three. As I as caught as three. As. Oh, there oh. is three all together. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. the world slowed as my eyes yeah, make she, Jeanette's uh, wow. as I, I hear a sickening crunch as my Apparently, head explodes. Yeah, Jeanette, do you want to explain as? Oh, yeah. Well, well the thing is, <laughs> let Let's me hear it. Started. She I'm stuck with a dead boyfriend. I was just going to say, where's your soapbox? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, because it's just the, the problem of saying that things are happening simultaneously. And a lot of times, what you'll do is, I mean, I just heard this in a, in a nationally published book where it was, you know, you get the, the action and the reaction even reversed. You get the reaction before, you know, I jumped to my feet as I heard, you know, the gunshot. And it's like that actually happened the other way. Um, but, I mean, just here, I mean, you don't want to do any construction over and over again. So, yeah, I think as I collapse and then there's one that's right next to that, you know, I lost it. But yeah, you so don't even need that. I, I mean, you could just say probably like Alex is here. I, I collapse. I collapse. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't need to. I think because we know that. You know, and you know when you have shorter sentences, and this is a, a big thing about pacing too, um, is when you have those short sentences, you bring a lot of emphasis to them, especially when you like you did mm -hmm. with uh, Alex is here when you. Um, give them their own line. So you could even give that other one its own line that I collapse or something yeah. like that. I mean, you just play with it. Yeah, yeah, it's the right amount. I hear a singing crunch as my head explodes. Uh, yeah, that one I would definitely, um, you know. I, you just take it out. Yeah, the as that one. And then there's one over here, though, that I would leave in. Where's the first one? The world slows as my eyes meet him. Yeah, because I feel like those, those things need to be simultaneous. And or you could say, as my eyes meet his, the world yeah. slows. Because that's kind of action reaction too, yes. because her eyes meet his and that's when the world slows. Yeah. So really that so, should be before that. Yeah, that's true. But she as I rise high in the air, because we have one right there. So actually you have four as's on this page, which Okay, I'm retroactive. Hey, I finished reading already. Wow. <laughs> but, you, wow, but you could very yeah. easily take a couple of those out yeah. though. And um, it'll just make it stronger. But this yeah. is I mean, I really enjoyed this. Though. Yeah, yeah, no, it was it was really so good that I didn't notice the as is and I always notice the as is. Yes. But the editors and agents might. And really, I mean if if it goes on for pages, it really, really and I've I've read That's those true. manuscripts where you start twitching. And now with my handwriting, it's so hard for me to use an as in the middle of a sentence ever, even though sometimes they're okay just because Doesn't I've been me. triggered so many times by it being overused. So. In fact I'd put one in on purpose if I'm going to have Jeanette read it. <laughs> Jeanette, like, Jeanette has PTASD, okay post-traumatic yeah, 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 it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with every now and then. It's just when it's Sometimes they're very needed. frequent within one page. That's when you want to Randy, read. you haven't said much. Right. Um, very clean. Uh, what I noticed was, and here's the problem with uh, first person, is you have to watch the use overuse of I. And uh, over the whole page, it's not excessive but there are paragraphs where you're starting too many of the sentences with I, 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 and you want to avoid that. And when it's said, read out loud, it definitely becomes very noticeable that that is happening uh, at some points in this. But that, that's a really easy fix. It's a very minor point to bring up. I, I thought the submission was very clean. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. should we vote? Yeah. yeah. Vote. All right, Randy, why don't you start? I am going to give it a ready. 
uh, because I think going in and just cleaning up the yeah. the excessive eyes in there, I, it, not so enough to prove. A ready minus then is what you're no, saying. No, I, <laughs> I think it's ready, ready to go. But tiny, tiny bit of revision. Yeah. Not enough to to affect what I think is uh, a story that's ready to go. Okay, and I also am going to give it a ready minus because <laughs> <laughs> I just invented that. I can't. Yeah, because there's just a few little things that you need to be you need to tweak and. Um, you, you run into that same problem in third person where you're having she, 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 she. Um, um, so yeah, a lot of times when I find that I've got a sentence where I'm overusing that, I'll think, okay, what what description can I put in? What Bunch internal thought on. can I put in? So mm -hmm. I'll break that up a little bit. But yeah, just very minor things. It's beautifully written. You could do he, 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 but then we think people would think yeah. you were laughing. Yeah. So anyway, so. we won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one's a tough one for me because I do think that readers would read on. So I want to say that right now. Um, so with that, I, it's like I want to give you ready. And yet there are those things that I know will clean it up and make it shine even more and make you a better writer. And so I'm going to give it a set, but it is like so close to the ready. ready minus. The ready minus is yes. what you're saying. <laughs> So just because the stuff with the cheerleading, you know, to do that, and then the as is, and then the eyes. I mean, if you clean those things up, it's going to be really great. But it is one of those things that voice and setting up that wonderful story question at the end that's going to propel us to the next um, page. Like, this, it's, you nailed it. And it's, it's really good. So, yeah. I want to read more. Yeah, me too. Really good. I really do. Well, I'm just proud of myself for knowing Pflugerville. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Um, no, I'm going to give it a ready. Uh, the, the, the minor issues we talked about would not keep me from continuing to read this. Uh, the voice, the storyline is really good. One caution is um, this, this bit of information comes at the end of the first chapter. You've got to be able to carry me all the way through that first chapter without that information, and that's the real hook for me. So that's caution fine. there. But I definitely would keep reading, and I would give it a ready. Hopefully okay. the voice is strong enough, though. It's yeah, really if it is, good. and again, yeah. maybe, it, again, good, I not having read point. the whole chapter. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know, but this is definitely very strong. Well, I want to add one thing. So here's, you know, this is the interesting thing about when we're talking about the voice and why that's so important. It's because even if your opening isn't, you know, like there's ogres someplace or there's, you know, there's some high tension thing happening, if the voice is strong, you feel like, this is an experienced author, and since this is an experienced author, they've probably written a decent plot. They've right. probably done stuff right. right. So, Well, yeah. you can be totally engaged by voice, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that during the course of our show, I've given readies to uh, first page submissions where the voice was just so strong that I kind of left the other criteria I normally look for go, go to the side because that was just so strong, and it, it hooks yeah. you, and I mean, that's really, your goal can you hook the reader and you that is possible with just voice it is yeah. right so did um, we get it right yeah. yeah of course we did we always yeah, did right. we always did yeah. <laughs> just like Pflugerville we got it right <laughs> all right so yeah please leave a comment what you think would you continue reading uh, the next chapter yeah, and uh, Subscribe. Subscribe if you haven't already. I mean, you should. I mean, yeah. if you've been watching this show by now. It's probably the most important thing you'll do today. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Next to getting your ma nails manicured. Yeah. That That's too. Pflugerville colors. Yes. And Pflugerville colors. I don't yes. know what color maize is. Does anyone? Is that corn? Well, it's like corn, corn, so I guess it'd be like a deep yellow. We'll have to look that yeah. up. That's so that's someone true. look up <laughs> what color maize is and put, put it in the comments below. In the comments. Thank you. All right. Until next time, get ready. Get set. Right. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And don't forget that we have a new sponsor this year. Our friend Ben Grange with Writer's Clearinghouse is offering all the prize support for uh, this year. And the winner each month will get a uh, first 10-page uh, manuscript evaluation for free. Yep. And then the winner of the full year is going to get a full manuscript critique. Wow. From... Agents and editors, guys. These are top that, guys. That have worked in the industry and really, really know their stuff. I mean, that, that's big. Okay, and then you can find out more about uh, Ben Grange and the Writers Clearinghouse at www.writersch, as in clearinghouse, writersclearinghouse.com.